Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to my messy garage. This week we're going to be looking at my little workspace that I have in my back porch. I've been using it for some of the videos recently. Uh, wiring the battery, rebuilding the carburetor, uh, setting up the Garmin. All those videos I did in my little back porch workshop. Kind of sort of getting things organized here. I got a few things that I want to do. Let me show you around. So here we have a small workspace that I've been using. Here I have a small, small little workbench area. I plan on putting a shelf up on the wall there. Not a whole lot of headroom as you can see. My back porch is kind of low. My laser cutter. Haven't been using it a whole bunch lately. Hopefully we'll come up with some interesting projects to, to do with it in the near future. You can see a little bit of a decoration back there that I have uh, on the wall. Just a sign that I don't even know where it came from. Something cute to hang on the wall. But I've been thinking, I want something that puts out a little bit of light. And I've always been curious about neon signs. Doing a little bit of research online, I'm, I'm sure there's a way that we can do it with using plastic rod and LED technology. So I went online, looked, and uh, I came across a channel on YouTube by a young lady. by goes by the name of Cheslin. Mm -hmm. Her video on making faux neon signs. And what she uses is EL wire. Now, EL wire is essentially uh, one continuous LED. I don't know how it's going to show up here with my recording lights and the outside light coming in. Anyways, you can see a little battery pack and a long string. And I've got one that's Almost same diameter as, say, 3D printing filament or uh, weed whacker filament. And it glows in the dark quite nicely. Daylight, not so much. I'll stick a quick picture in here of some EL wire in the dark and you'll see what it looks like. So we take the EL wire and we put it on a background. And we power it up. It seems pretty simple. What I plan on doing in today's video is making a reproduction of my channel logo. We're going to start off with a 12 by 12 wooden panel with a base. It's got some room for hiding wiring in behind. First thing we need to do is we need to, there we are, it's black, very quick drying paint. The way we're going to turn this into a neon sign is we are going to come up from the back side, attach our EL wire to the surface of the, of the panel and following a stencil we'll lay out the shape of sign we want to have. So here we have printout. This is actually the picture that I based my channel logo on. Blown up and printed out on uh, 13 by 19 paper. I'm going to cut out the outside of the gear and I'll bring you back when it's done and uh, we'll start laying it out on the wooden panel. Okay, so here we are. We've got it basically cut out and laid out on the panel, pretty much where I want it. Cutting it out, not going to be really super critical because I'm going to be tracing it and then I'm going to be gluing a piece of wire down with a hot glue gun that follows it. We'll trace this around. Okay, there we go. And I don't know how well that shows up for you guys, but definitely I can see a very clear line all the way around. I won't claim to have ever been the most perfect script writer. Now, I'm going to make a, more of a conventional G than what is a official script, just because it matches what I'm doing here better. So, that kind of shows what I'm trying to accomplish. 
So the next step is, let's see what colors we want to use. That's kind of a blue. And you notice that pressing the button, we get different modes. That's kind of a reddish color. That one is orange. Another one here that's blue, I believe. That's a nice blue. And the rest of these don't have any batteries in them yet. Purple, yellow. Might be interesting to see what this one looks like. Um, it's going to swap over. That's kind of a bright yellow more than an orange. Now one problem I had with these when I got them from Amazon, fresh out of the package, you'll notice this has batteries in it, and you'll notice that it's not coming on. Here in this corner, for some reason, the battery's not making a good connection. I put my thumbnail under there, and now we've got a nice light green. I take my thumbnail away, nothing. What's going on here is, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, there's a notch here that the tip of the battery has to fit through and the notch is not quite wide enough for the tip of the battery to go in. There's a couple of different ways to deal with this that I've found. One is to take the blade of my knife carefully so that I don't cut myself and just kind of pry that forward. Okay, we had a little camera malfunction. Got it fixed again. We have a lot of trouble with this camera lately. Good thing I've ordered a new one. Anyways, so what we need to do is we need to drill a hole that the EL wire can come up through. You'll notice I've drilled one here already while I thought the camera was working. Um, I couldn't drill down at the bottom edge because we have this frame that goes all the way around. So we had to kind of come up through there. You'll notice that the EL wire has a little cap on the end of it. That's just to keep the worst of the liquid out. I guess these things are prone to corrosion. Get that up through. And we'll uh, leave six inches or so at the back side. I guess we can pull it up tight against the heat shrink. And now we need to work it all the way around. I've already checked, and there's way more than enough EL wire to go all the way around the outside of the gear. And we will just snip off the end and put the cap back on. I'll bring you back when the glue gun is heated up, and then we'll start running the wire around. Okay, we got the glue gun warmed up. And now we'll just lay this down. So that it follows the uh, lines that I've laid out. Now one thing you have to keep in mind is you can't bend the EL wire too sharp. Uh, the angle that I'm trying to bend here to go around the gear should be fine. But when we go to do the script, we'll have to uh, deal with the angle. Now, of course, you want to be careful so you don't end up burning yourself. And you don't end up with massive amounts of hot glue stringing around all over the place. As I <laughs> appear to be doing. And you don't want to watch me continuing around all the way here. I'll bring you back when it's done. Well, I hope this looks better on uh, camera than it does in person. Um, either my uh, skills with the glue gun are somewhat lacking, or this is not the right glue gun or glue to be using for this project, because it kind of made a mess. Anyways, uh, it took me about 20 minutes to go all the way around, get this glued down in place, because I had to wait for the glue to 
cool. And then it took me probably another half hour just to clean it up to the point where it is. And it doesn't look that bad on the screen and the camera, but I'm not real impressed. This is the first time I've tried doing this, so maybe it's just my lack of skill with a group glue gun. Anyways, as you can see, we got a few feet of wire left sticking out. So we'll take our drill, a little hole, pull the cap off and it down through the hole. We could just leave this all coiled up nice and neatly, tape it in behind, put the cap on the end, and we'd be just fine. But The better way to do it is just to snip it off. We'll take the glue gun, seal up the end, put the cap back on. Keeps moisture from getting into the AL wire. And then we'll take the piece that we've cut off and just seal the ends of it. Good. Now it is possible to splice this back in at another time if I came up with another project that I wanted that color I could conceivably do it. Now I'm going to turn off the uh, recording lights here and I'm going to fire this up and you'll see what it looks like. Kind of hides the mess a little bit. Flash mode and off. So now we need to do th the same thing again. I think we're going to go with this one. It's close to the red that I wanted. And I think it'll work quite all right. Now one of the problems that we're going to have with this is that we can't make sharp corners. So if we come up here at the top of the D and come down, I don't know whether that's showing up on the camera or not. Uh, come down, we can do that loop, go around. That's not a problem. The O, we can go all the way around, no big deal. This and this, the points of the U are going to be a problem. Uh, probably what I'm going to do when I get there, we'll see how it looks, but I'm going to go back down through the board, do a loop in behind, come back up and do the other loop. Uh, likewise with the G, we can go all the way around. Uh, the 90 degree sharp corner on the S is going to be a problem, as is the reversal that we do here. So let me uh, drill some holes and I'll start running this cable through and uh, I'll bring you back when I've got most of the D done. I'll show you how we deal with the sharp corners. Okay, so we've gotten to the point where we're starting to work on the, uh, the U. As you can see, we came down, did a little loop around, made the O, we went up to the top of the U, and I've made a little loop. Of course, the glue's not cooperating on the back. And then drilled another hole and came back through where we will put the U. And we'll go back through and do another loop on the back side. Now here, what I've done is I've worked the drill bit side to side a little bit and made enough room that I can hopefully, there we go, bring the drill bit back, or bring the uh, EL wire back out through. You glue that in place. I think this glue gun is designed for gluing pieces of lumber together, not for arts and crafts type stuff. If I ever decide to do another one of these signs, I think I will use a smaller glue gun. Because this one just makes a huge mess. I don't know whether that's showing up on camera or not, but it's going to take me another hour to clean this all this text up to the point where it is even close to being presentable. Okay, the U is glued down in place. Let's 
And now we'll start the G. Ooh, that is warm on the fingertips. Well, no sense sitting here waiting for glue to dry. I will uh, bring you back when I've got some more progress made. Well, there we go. We got it put together. One thing to consider with this, my glue gun that I was using is very much a, uh, how should we put it, glue two by fours together, as opposed to doing craft. If you're gonna do something like this, a uh, craft hot glue gun with craft style hot glue is probably a good idea. This tends to put out way too much glue and it ran all over the place, made a big mess and uh, I ended up having to go along and clean up afterwards. What I did to clean up was I used a utility, utility knife heated with a propane torch and just went in and scraped the uh, excess glue up. Now that I got the lights on you can probably see nah, it's hard to see. You can probably see that there's a little bit of uh, residue on the plywood. But when you're in relative darkness and you have just the lights of the sign going, you don't really see the, uh, the residue. Definitely I would do it a little different if I were to do it again. I probably will make another one, something different. I still have another wooden panel, what did I say? This turned out okay. I still have uh, a number of the battery packs. and several colors of EL wire left. So I'm sure I can come up with something. This was a quick and simple little project to put something I can hang on the wall that gives off a little bit of light and it's something in the background other than a white wall. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you get something from this. Uh, definitely check out Cheslin's channel. She did a fantastic job. She goes into much more detail of how the uh, EL wire works and how you can splice it together, that kind of thing. And have a good day. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And for more great content from Doug's Messy Garage, select the video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching.